Bloom in Brussels. The former UKIP MEP makes one of his last trips to the Belgian capital before he formally steps down next month. Good morning, Mr. Bloom. Good morning to you. <laughs> I haven't. I see you're well armed this I, time. I have not escalated. <laughs> it's an old rugby injury which gets me every now and again. So. Uh, so uh, this time you can cause real damage. I can. Yes, if indeed. I, if I ask the wrong question. If I, if I didn't need it to lean on, do boy. <laughs> Rather different from our encounter last year, which contributed to UKIP ditching him as a Euro candidate. Now, Mr. Mr. Bloom, what do you make of the front cover of this, uh, your uh, the conference brochure with no black faces on it? What a racist comment is that? How dare you? That's an appalling thing to say. You're picking people out for the colour of their skin. You disgust no. me. Get out of my way. Why, why am I racist for saying? There aren't, you there aren't any black this, people. And you've checked out pe the colour of people's faces. You're disgraceful. You're disgraceful. Well, what's... The last time we met, <laughs> we had that famous incident. What are your thoughts about that now? Well, uh, a big thank you, really, because uh, I've got my life back now. And uh... What, you think <laughs> that... If it wasn't for that, you'd, you'd be standing again? Uh, no, I think uh, it was, a, it was a, if you will... Uh, I think it was a sort of defining moment, as it were, and... Uh, In what way? Uh, well, I think it, it made me realise that I wasn't really suited to party politics. Bloom has spent ten years here, but even after Farage purged him, the two old chums carried on sharing a Brussels flat, where he says they were, quotes, two bachelor-oriented type guys. Top flat on the left. Right. And what, two bedrooms? Uh, yeah, two bedrooms. What are you trying to imply? <laughs> and did you get up to all sorts of naughtiness up there as well? Um, not naughtiness, no. We've had a good few drinks up there, but large, largely that's a place we, in, we, we, we give drinks to the press. Whether they should wear logo on the front of their shirt or the back. He denies being drunk, though, when making this speech to the Parliament. He was suffering merely from painkillers, he says. Though he admits he spoke when drunk on another occasion. People said you were drunk. Well, I've made 40 speeches. Uh, in fact, interestingly enough, I'm in uh, liaison with the Guinness Book of Rep Records. More people have seen my speeches than any other politician in the history of this parliament. It's now over six million. What, on YouTube? Yes. Bloom says that essentially, like many in UKIP, he's a libertarian. But that's not easy in a party which increasingly has been stressing toughness on immigration. One of the things which, of course, I didn't particularly agree with, although I fully understand why the party has gone this route, because they need to win elections. And when you go onto the doorstep, it's all about immigration and people are very concerned. And I understand that. But, of course, as a libertarian, I believe a small business or any business should be able to employ whomsoever they want. Bloom also says it's wrong for UKIP to reject now a Brussels alliance with Marine Le Pen, leader of the French Front National, a party which Farage says contains anti-Semitism. <laughs> a small push with one finger there. You see the way that runs up the... You could bring down the whole building if, you, if, you, if you're not careful. If I thought I could, I'd given it a damned harder rattle than that, Michael, believe me. Building a strong Eurosceptic bloc to bring down the EU is what matters, says Bloom, rather like joining Stalin to defeat Hitler. I mean, I'm only interested in saving my country, and if the, the perception of a, a big group of, 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 Euro, uh, of Eurosceptics are perceived to be racist, which is a subjective view anyway, I don't care about that any more than my father when he was flying Spitfires cared whether Stalin was an evil man. And strangely, Russian leaders cropped up again as we chatted over lunch about the style of his old flatmate, Nigel Farage. You get purged, don't you, quite easily in UKIP? Uh, yes, you get many, many a night of the long knives in UKIP. Uh, I mean, you can see what he admires in Putin. Oh, yes, uh, yes. In fact, I think he probably, he probably thinks Putin's a bit of an old softy, actually. But doesn't it mean that there's a bit of a dearth of, of other people to take on some of the burden? Yes, I think uh, it's something that probably Joe Stalin lacked, uh, people around him to actually uh, help out with the decision-making process. You compare Nigel Farage with Joseph Stalin? Only in technique. 
well, the ability to purge people. He's a purger, let's be honest. He's a bit of a purger. So the purge bloom retires from Brussels. I've had enough of it now, Michael. I'm glad to see the back of it, frankly. But he may not have given up politics entirely. He teases that if a Westminster by-election cropped up back home in Yorkshire, he might just be tempted.